Okay, so in this video, we're going to go over how to install WordPress in a subdirectory. Um, a couple of the different points we're going to talk about is what is a subdirectory versus a subdomain, creating how to create the subdirectory, how to create your database and your user, how to download and where to download WordPress from, how to install WordPress, and then how to access your new WordPress installation. So it'll just take a few minutes. Uh, so sit back, relax, and learn how to install WordPress in a subdirectory. So here we are in the cPanel interface for our hosting company. Yours most likely has one too. It's usually just your domain dot C, or your domain dot com slash cPanel. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you though is what is the difference between a subdomain and a subdirectory. A subdomain would be if you wanted to have something like this where this first part here is called the subdomain. It's the something before the dot .yourdomain.com. A subdirectory is anything that's after the .com. So your panel, yourdomain.com slash squeeze page slash sales page slash my awesome site, whatever it is. So this is the subdirectory and the other that we had when it was over here with the dot in it, that's the sub, this is the subdomain. So today we're going to be talking about the subdirectory, and this is actually fairly easy, fairly straightforward. Like I said, we're in our cPanel. We're going to go into File Manager, and we're going to create our subdirectory. So it's very simple. We just go into your into your File Manager. Make sure that you're in your public HTML or wherever folder your website is installed in, and we're just going to go with Create a New Folder. Whatever the folder name is is what's going to be that part of the URL for your subdirectory. So if you want it to be yourdomain.com slash squeeze page, the folder name should be squeeze page. Um, in this, I, and then you can change it if you decide you want to change it, but don't change it after you do your installation or you're going to mess up your links. So here's our folder, our new subdirectory. We're going to actually open that up. This is where WordPress is going to be installed. Now I'm going to walk you through how to install WordPress manually. To install WordPress manually, the first thing we're going to go do is um, we're going to go back and create our database. So we're going to go back to our cPanel, which should be in another tab in your browser. And we're going to go down to our uh, MySQL database wizard. This should be the beginnings of whatever is your um, whatever your your hosting company sets you up with. So this is our test you can give your database uh, and the username that you're going to create next the same they can be the same thing they can be both be the same thing they can be slightly different the important part here is to make sure that you pick a really secure password and that's why I always use the password generator this is not a password that you have to remember um, this is only a password that you need to like copy somewhere else and use it once to install WordPress and then you're done so it can be really secure really hard to remember I like to find one just go through the password generator until I find one that has a whole bunch of random characters in it. I like this one. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to come down and paste it into Notepad as you see here and this way I don't have to worry about writing it down and did I write it down correctly and then I can just copy and paste it later. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and create a user. Now we need to add privileges. Some tutorials will tell you to use um, all privileges but you don't need to. I usually go with these. And these do well for me. And it's basically almost all of the single ones. And I know there's actually probably a few in here that I don't need, but that works good for me. Okay, so now my database has been corrected, it has been created. Then the next step is going to be to go to wordpress.org and we're going to download our software. We're going to go right here to the download button and download again. And just save it somewhere where you'll remember where it is, your desktop, your, your downloads, wherever you'll, it'll be easy for you to find later. We're going to go back into our file manager now. We're going to upload that WordPress zip file that we just downloaded. So I'm going to look in my downloads folder where I put it and there it is WordPress 3.5.1 it's going to take a few seconds to upload here it doesn't take very long usually depending on your your server and your internet connection but it's not 
Yeah, see, already complete. So we're gonna hit go ahead and say complete on that. We can close out of the update window and if we or the upload window. And if we come back to our file manager and we reload it, we'll see that. So now we click on this, we click extract. This is just confirming that we want to put it in the folder that it's currently in. So that's great. Everything's been extracted. We're going to hit reload again, and you'll notice we have a WordPress folder. Now, we don't actually want this to be in the WordPress folder in our subdirectory, because that would be a subfolder of the subdirectory. So we're going to go into that WordPress folder. We're going to select all. We're going to say move file, and we're just going to take WordPress out of that path. So now all of our files are sitting here in our main subdirectory folder and we can get rid of the WordPress folder and the WordPress zip file. We can go ahead and delete those. So now if we go to Uh, pardon me, I have what I call typing performance anxiety. Whenever anybody can see me typing, I always screw up. Okay, so we're going to our subdirectory here. We need to configure, we need to create the configuration file to finish setting up WordPress. It's going to help us do that. So we're going to, this is the information that we need. Database name, we did not call it WordPress. This is what we called it. And the username is basically, is that I created is the same thing with the U after it. All right, password. This is where we're going to go back to our notepad document and paste that in. Localhost, nine times out of ten, your database host is going to be localhost. If your database host is likely to be something other than localhost, your server will, your hosting company will tell you. Table prefix um, needs to, can be anything. It needs to start with a letter. It cannot start with a number, but it can be anything. So you can call it purple, you can call it one, two, three. I'm sorry, you can't call it one, two, three. You can give it your name. Um, I generally prefer not to use WP underscore because that's one of those things that hackers know and can make your site less secure. So I always change it to something else. Okay. Well, now we're going to actually run the installation. So this is our subdirectory demo. Change it to not something other than admin. No password. my email address and I am taking this off because while the site is still in development I prefer to have it hidden from search engines I can always change that later so we're gonna finish installing WordPress it is installed and now I could log into WordPress with my password and you'll see that I have just like any other WordPress installation so now how do I get to this? If this is what you've just done and you've made installed WordPress in the subdirectory and you want to know A, how to tell people where to get to it and B, how do you get to it yourself, usually going to WordPress is as simple as going to yourdomain.com slash wpadmin. For this, the only difference is that we have to put in that subdomain, <coughs> there, I'm sorry, the subdirectory full folder name that we just created and that's how you would get to the admin thing the admin screen to log in and then of course if you wanted to actually tell people how to get to it you just go to subdomain I'm sorry yourdomain.com slash subdirectory name in this case beyondtheoffice.com slash squeeze page so that's it um, pretty simple less than 10 minutes to create to install WordPress in a subdirectory and set up a new site this is the perfect thing for if you want to use something like optimize press to create some landing pages for a specific event or product that you have um, happening if you have any questions please feel free to leave a comment at the bottom of the blog post and I will do my best to help you out hope it was easy and hope you enjoy it bye